How's it going, everyone? This is Jason. Today, we're going to talk about the daily wrap up for the interview with Dr. Umar Johnson. And in that interview, we're going to mainly talk about the segment where he talks about how black men need to be responsible for the poor decisions of black women. You have to, when you watch or listen to Dr. Umar, you have to ask yourself are you a follower of the market, Marcus Garvey pan African um, movement? Or are you just, hey, I'm pro-black American? Or are you like, hey, I'm okay with interracial dating? So when you look at it, you have to understand when he speaks, he is speaking for that group. I know he likes to he likes to make it seem like that all black people need to be on one accord. And he and I'm gonna say he's he's delusional with that because I know a lot of black people want to think that all of us are the same. We're not. People from Ghana has their own separate culture. People from Atlanta has their own separate culture. People from Jamaica, Haiti, um, Nigeria, Kenya, New Orleans, Chicago, New York, they all have their own different type of culture and backgrounds and beliefs and values, right? Now, Black Americans as a whole, I can see we are considered one group, but even then, when you break it down, we're all not the same. I think the reason why it makes it difficult for us to get anything done because we keep moving as if we need all people to get on board initially in order for us to get this thing successful. And I don't believe that. I feel like we can start with a small group for each movement. If you are a Marcus Garvey person, you, you can get 3,000 people behind your movement. Start off with those 3,000 people. If you are a passport bro and you say, hey, let's go overseas, black men. Let's go over here. You can get 3,000 men to go part of that movement, this event. I don't believe the most effective way to get something done is to have 100% participation because we're not going to get 100% participation. And we're going to talk about this interview that he did on the Daily Wrap-Up Crew. Let's analyze it. Let's Because we because we, he says things. But, of course, he doesn't give all the context and all the details because the interview, he can't give that. So that's up to us to sit back and then break it down, the good, the bad, the ugly, in order for us to come up with a plan to move forward. All right? So let's play this video, and I'm going to stop it in between and break things down. The CIA brought feminism into the white household to get the woman out the house and into the black household to turn the black woman against the black man. In order for us to do what he is saying, we need to understand everything that we are dealing with. And one of the things that we are dealing with, black men, is a system that was put in place by the CIA. You can't solve no problems without understanding what is the problem and, and the workings of that problem. Even now, there's a lot more rhetoric from our women that we hear is I'm um, strong, independent, I don't need no man, right? So, that's just, that, that's pain speaking though. Right. Because most black women know they will never get a man. A black woman can have sex whenever she wants. Right. Because she's beautiful. She can have a bed mate, but to have a soul mate, she may never get a man. One out of four black women will get a man marriage. Now, I watched another um, black YouTuber. He mentioned another statistic, which is that majority of black men are not having sex. They're not participating in the dating marketplace. So not only do black men, we're dealing with the CIA. We're also dealing with the fact that majority of the black men aren't marrying, aren't having sex. They aren't reproducing. It is a minority group of black men who is reproducing with majority of the black women in the community. I understand you will say, well, if you can't find a good woman in America, there's somewhere else. In Absolutely. Africa. So why not teach that same rhetoric to our women? Like if you, I do. If you feel I like tell you... sisters all the time, go to Africa. So I then... know sisters who marry. I just I just uh, spoke with a sister. She invited me to the wedding. She just married a brother from the continent. So, I, But instead of saying they, they will never I'll get married. I'll take sisters to Africa who married brothers they met right. in Africa. Right. So yeah, I, I think there's plenty. There's plenty. I think there's obviously plenty of black men yes, black women. So and what I also tell that black women, if married, you're going to go get you an African man from the continent, right. you're going to have to understand that the way in which you talk to black men in America mm. will not be tolerated over there. Mm. Okay. Once again, I'm trying to lay out all of the issues, all of the hurdles, all of the, the alligator pits that we have to navigate black men based off because he wants black men to be responsible for the four decisions. 
poor decisions. Yeah, it's a lot that we have to analyze and know what we're walking into. Because we try to act like the way sisters treat us doesn't have a history that we are not at least partly responsible for. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. The black woman has had to hold down the black house by herself, mm -hmm. although imperfectly. Mm -hmm. She's had to do it by herself since the mass incarceration of black males began in the 1970s. You mm -hmm. understand me? Mm -hmm. Most of our children are raised by a single mother right now. Mm -hmm. And it has been that way for about 50 years. So when a sister says... I don't need a man because she couldn't find one strong enough to hold her down. Or when you meet a woman and you say, sister, I'm, I'm strong enough to be a man. You ain't got the work or you ain't got to pay the bills or whatever. Pull back. I got you. And she can't do it because all the other men before you mm -hmm. who disappointed her. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is black man, we got to be patient with our women because we created that personality. We created that. And then we, we want to uh, act like we didn't play a role.